Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Joel Klatt, and this is a Joel Klatt Show YouTube exclusive. We are here just for you to break down these top quarterbacks in the 2024 NFL Draft, and I've got the video to back it up. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with my top five quarterbacks, but we really need to get to my top six. So I've got video of my top six guys, and I'm going to start with my number one quarterback, Caleb Williams, okay? I've been telling you guys really ever since the fall, about these five categories that I like to evaluate quarterbacks in, okay? And so I wanted to bring up those categories here and so that you can see them, and then we can evaluate Caleb Williams together in these categories. Football IQ, pocket control, arm talent, creativity, and mobility. Now, I happen to believe that Caleb is elite in every one of these categories, but let's let the film actually tell us why he is elite in every one of those categories. Let's start here with this game against Arizona State. Okay, first of all, you're going to have five free releases. You've got these two down, down uh, wide receivers down here. They're going to block for a swing screen. And Caleb Williams has to read that side first. It's a full field read. So the first thing he's going to do is read over here to his left side. He doesn't like it because he's got a safety and a linebacker moving this way. Watch him control the pocket, understand the game, and move back to his right side. So now he's on his third, now fourth read based on this linebacker. Keep in mind he is continuing to manipulate the pocket, read the play out, and he gets all the way to his fourth man in his progression, and he throws an absolute dime perfectly in stride, ready to go. What did that show us? He's He's got a high football IQ, it's elite, and he's got elite pocket control. He can stay calm in the midst of chaos around him and make a read and make a throw. So that's a couple of categories right there. Let's continue. Same type of play here in that you're going to get five free releases. Now, what you've got to understand is what you're looking at because Zachariah Branch, their true freshman who's really an elite player, he's got this jerk route. And so what you want is a one-on-one -on -one with Zachariah Branch. But right now, it doesn't look like they have that. They've got a linebacker walked out and a safety, but the linebacker blitzes, and this linebacker runs out with the swing screen. So now Caleb Williams, post-snap, has to understand what he's looking at and go back to the jerk route, calm himself in the pocket so he can wait for Branch to break once and then come back on the double move, and then he's got to give him a great ball. And this is where arm talent comes into play. You've got to understand the trajectory, you've got to understand the touch, and you've got to put it out in front of him so that he can make a play after the catch. That's what I love about Caleb Williams. We continue on here. Now you're going to have a, a, a similar effect in that you've got five free releases, so he's got to understand what he's looking at pre-snap and what he gets post-snap. Football IQ off the charts here. He's got a combination route down here. He's got a safety in the middle of the field, and he understands that with this swing and a slant, if he's got all of this space right here now, this one defender, he's the only one I'm reading. If he runs out with this screen, with this swing, I should say, now I can throw the slant behind it. But this is where arm talent comes into play. I better get on that back foot and throw a missile. Zoom right into a tight window, and it's got to be out in front, which it is. It's in the chest, and he can run after the catch, and he gets positive yards after the catch. Guys, that's, that's tough to do. So you go back to the grade sheet, and it's like, all right, he has shown us now football IQ. He's shown us pocket control. He's showing us elite arm talent. It's all there, accuracy. All of it is there. So now it comes down to, like, creativity, mobility. What do we get? when we get Caleb Williams in those settings? Well, let's let the tape talk for itself. Colorado game, game that Gus and I were calling. This play happened, I thought to myself, no way. First of all, he's dancing, he's dancing, and now he gets uh, basically a dead run to his left. Look at his body position. He goes off his right foot and throws it back across his body down the field 20, 25 yards to an open wide receiver. It's on the money up on top of his helmet, and he can run after the catch. He doesn't bring him down to the ground. He runs after the catch. Creativity, elite. Arm talent, elite. Guys don't make that throw. IQ, control, talent, creativity. It's all there. So now the last thing that we've got to evaluate is his ability to be a threat as a runner. Are his legs a threat? Well, we don't even need the fancy video to know that he can create in the pocket, elude the rush, look at him, dance around, he fakes pumps, throws the ball out there, arm talent, creativity, all of it, right? Now, as a straight runner, what do I got? He's dancing, he gets away, he eludes, he dances to the end zone. We constantly see this guy as a threat 
running the football down the field, here in the pocket, running around, running around, running around. What does he see? Well, now he can take off. What is he? He's a threat. He's an elite threat as a runner. So every category, you come back to this, and you're like, elite, 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 elite. What does that make him? An elite prospect. That's why Caleb Williams is number one. That's why he's a generational talent. That's why I've been raving about him ever since the start of this process, really ever since, in a lot of ways, he was at OU. He is as good of a quarterback as we've seen in a long time. Now, is it definitely going to pan out? I don't know. I don't know. Because sometimes fit has a lot to do with it. Is it going to work out in Chicago? Let's just say it this way. He's going to get drafted by the Bears, and the Bears are in a much better position for him to succeed, Caleb, than they were when Justin Fields was taken by the Bears. So I think it will work. Whether it does or not, that remains to be seen. But Caleb Williams is an elite player. Let's go on in my rankings here, and I want to get to my number two quarterback. So Drake May is my number two quarterback. And before we get into the film... I just have to say, this, this notion in this process that Drake May is falling or he's not as good as advertised, that's false. Drake is as good as, as advertised. He's an excellent player. And in a lot of ways, this reminds me of this narrative that was started last year around C.J. Stroud. I didn't understand it then, and you look at what C.J. Stroud was able to do in his rookie season with the Texans, and you're like, well, what was all of that you know, smokescreen and, and fluff around the draft process? Well, that's what it was. It was a smokescreen. It was fluff. I think that's what we're starting to hear and see with Drake May. I get it. There's going to be some purists that don't love his feet, that don't love his decision-making ability, in particular when he didn't have a lot around him and he was trying to force the football down the field. But when you watch some of these elite attributes that Drake May has, it jumps off the tape, and you realize that he does things better than any of these guys except for Caleb Williams. He makes throws that are ridiculous, and I want to take you to the tape. This is the, the Holiday Bowl a couple of years ago against Oregon. Watch this throw. So first and foremost, what am I looking at in the red zone? Well, I've got two high safety and a linebacker walked out. Okay, I've only got... A limited number of guys here in the front seven. In fact, there's only four up there. We're getting a four-man rush, and yet one of them gets to me. And I understand that I've got to hit my back foot and throw a tight window in a triangle to one player coming across the edge, and I need to lead him up and high into the end zone. That throw is incredible. Like, it just doesn't happen. You don't, you don't make that throw. I... <laughs> I love that throw. Guys don't do that often. And I think that that gets lost when people are trying to nitpick at Drake May. He made another one that I almost came out of the booth for at the Holiday Bowl. This one, I think, is it, it encapsulates it. This is the, the only tape that you need to see for Drake May. First and foremost, the pocket is a disaster. And he stays in it. He doesn't run around. He doesn't panic. He's got a free rusher in his face, and he's still reading it down the field. The safety is going to run across the field with that over. He's got a second guy in his face, and now he's got a one-on-one -on -one here, and he's got to lead him out. That throw is ridiculous. It's perfectly placed. It's on time. And if it's not there, you don't get any yak yards after the catch. And what happens? He actually runs for a touchdown. Why? Why was that a touchdown? For no other reason than Drake May is supernatural. He eludes the rush in a tight space. So first of all, he gets back in the pocket and he kicks and he steps up when there's no space to kick and step up in. Then he still has the power and the foresight to read it out out there. He's reading it out and then throws a dime. And people are like, I, I don't love his footwork. What? Am I taking crazy pills? Yes. The answer is yes. Drake May is unreal. And by the way, he can be, although not an elite, creator and threat with his legs. If you watch him in, in, in action, you'll see him be able to tuck it. Now, you can see like he's manageable as a runner. I don't think he's elite. He's not threatening the defense. He can run if it's there. He can create. He can throw on the run. 
So I think it's it's okay, right, when he gets out into that situation. He can. Again, it's, it's not elite. So let's go back to the grade sheet. If Caleb Williams was elite in every category, I give Drake May an elite in four categories. IQ, pocket control, arm talent, and creativity. The mobility part, I would just say, okay, he's, he's okay. He's serviceable. So what does that make him? An excellent prospect. I think in any other draft where Caleb Williams is not in the draft, Drake May is the top pick in the draft. He should get taken second. I don't think he's going to get taken second, but he should get taken second. That throw I just showed you was unreal. Just watch it again. Just watch it again. I love that kid. I think that he's going to be highly competitive. I think he's going to be really good. All right, let's show you some more of these guys. And rather than go back to the grade sheet, I just want to show you some of these attributes of each of these quarterbacks on film. So let's go with Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is a fantastic player. I love watching him play. He does a lot of things well. One of the things that they did so well last year at LSU is that they were able to threaten the defense down the field, um, in particular with neighbors, but they could do that because he was able to recognize the coverage, see it, he saw safeties downs, and then he could hit them over the top. I'm going to start with a play against Alabama where Jaden Daniels sees the defense move, okay? I believe this is Caleb Downs here, the safety. So at the snap, because of the motion, look, and he gets a safety down. Boom, he claps his hands, and now the coverage has changed. So what does he have? Well, now he has Malik Neighbors in a one-on-one -on -one situation. The guy has a rocket on, the, on his back, and look, he can just hit him deep for a big play. Now, is that a tough throw? Not, not in particular, but he understands it, and so the IQ is there. And it's all happening kind of like as the motion is coming in, as the, the safety is sinking right there, and he still he understands what, what is going on in the football field from a full field read perspective. It happened again later in this game, and actually this is more like a two-minute situation. And I want you to, see, to watch the safeties, and the safeties aren't going to get deep, but Daniels understands his route structure, and he understands ball placement. So watch this elite arm talent right here. That's covered. It's a great coverage by the safety, he, proper leverage, and yet Daniels throws it on the back shoulder away from the defense. That's a great throw, which is the only reason that Lacey's able to catch the ball and get it in the end zone. That all happens because of the quarterback. He knows the coverage, and he can step up, and he's, he's passing the football, and he's communicating with the ball placement of the ball. Later in this game, it, you look at his ability to threaten the defense with his legs. And, and this is a double-edged sword with Jaden Daniels because in one respect, he has this ability. Boom, he spins out of the pocket. And now he's got the ability also to take a defender and make him miss in the open field. So now he goes back, but then watch, bam, he takes a big hit. Here's Dallas Turner with bad intentions, and he comes in, and boom, he, he takes a hit. That would be a concern for me. How many hits can he... How many hits can he take in his career like that if he wants to be a runner? And yet... You don't want to take his ability to threaten the defense with his legs away. Why? Well, watch what he does to Ole Miss. So you go over to the Ole Miss play, and this is a designed quarterback run. Look, you're going to release linemen and the back up to the second level to block the linebackers. And watch this dude's top end. It's like, what? You don't see that all the time. He tops out at 21 miles an hour. That's kind of a magical number in, in football circles. If you can run 21 miles an hour or over, on the field in pads, you're doing work. So long story short, like he is a fantastic player. You see it in his reads and his ability to throw with leverage and understand the game from the pocket. He's played a lot of ball. He's also an elite runner and he can make guys miss in the open field. He, he can split defenders and, and he's got a top gear that not many people have on the field. And yet like that may, may, make him susceptible, excuse me, to more hits. I, that would be my one concern. But Jaden Daniels is fantastic. I think he's probably going to be the second pick in the draft. I think Washington's going to take Jaden Daniels. Let's talk about Michael Penix Jr. Okay, so his superpower is his ability to not just be a great thrower of the ball, but a great passer of the ball. You need to do that in two ways. Okay, quarterbacks have to pass the football with great leverage, first of all, and pitch selection. What do I mean by that? Leverage means is that you're putting your offensive player, your wide receiver, in a position where he has better odds to catch the ball than the defender. You've always heard, all of us say it, all of the analysts, like, oh, man, he's great in the 50-50 situation. 
That wide receiver, I'll tell you what, he's great in the 50-50 situation. Give him a 50-50 ball. Well, why give him a 50-50 throw when you could give him a 55-45 throw or a 60-40 throw or a 65-35 throw? See, the odds go in the wide receiver's favor because of the leverage he passes with. And he also does it with great pitch selection. Like a pitcher in baseball, I've got a fastball. I've got a cutter. I can throw it. So as a quarterback, I can change speeds. I can throw with touch. I can drive the ball. I can layer the ball. I can also sit there and just throw an absolute hammer in there. And I can be accurate and create yards after the catch, even in the short areas. He does all of that. He's an elite passer of the football. Let me show you why. All right, so when we go first uh, to this play, this is a, a great example of pitch selection and leverage. It's just a slot fade, okay? And it's like, well, what do you mean? This is a nondescript play. Yes, it is, but he gets an outside release by his wide receiver, which means the defender's inside, and he's got a free safety that has no other threat around him. So he knows that this safety is going to be in the play. That ball doesn't bring the wide receiver toward the hash. It takes him away. Look at that ball is outside. That's proper leverage. So he's increasing the odds for his wide receiver over the defender. These receivers were fantastic, yes, but Penix was putting them in a position to succeed constantly, and he does it every single play. It, at least it seems when you're watching it. Let's go to the next play. You know, he played a, a great Oregon defense a couple of times, and he did this to them constantly. First of all, terrific stack release. He makes a great decision on time. The protection's brilliant, and Penix is going to throw the ball because this defender sits, so he's got the one-on-one -on -one going to the deep end of the end zone, and look at this ball. Bam, out in front of the defender. That is thrown perfectly. That's a touch pass. He's throwing a touch pass. It doesn't drag him inside. It's not short. It's out in front, and it's away from the defender. So now it's a 65-35 ball. It's not a 50-50 situation where the wide receiver has to come back to the football. He does this again uh, in this Oregon game. And watch the pitch selection on this one. So it's not always just a fade or, or a touch pass. Now he's got Adunze down here on, on the fade, and he's got a defender on the hash. Okay, so this defender is close. Watch the... The, the, the drive he puts on this ball, bam, he drives it to his back shoulder, and now he throws a back shoulder ball away from the defender. So he understands pitch, so pitch selection, he understands leverage, and he's constantly making his wide receivers better players because of the way that he passes the football. To me, that's the mark of a great quarterback, and, and Pinnix is that. He is a great passer. Now, He's got elite speed as well. It's just that he doesn't want to show that as much because of the injuries that he faced in his career at Indiana. Let me show you the tight areas. It's not always just down the field. When you're in, in first down, what do you need to do? Create easy yards, okay? Leverage throws. Well, to do that, you better be accurate. Look at this ball up at the face mask in front of his wide receiver who can then run after the catch, and now first and 10 turns into second and short. He did it again to Washington State later in this game. Again, nondescript. First down play. What are we going to do? It's a little RPO, and watch. He kind of gets on the back foot and just slings it out there. Where's the ball? On the face mask for his wide receiver to run. These are small things that make quality quarterbacks great because they get little yards. They turn first and 10, not into second and seven because the wide receiver has to reach behind them, but the wide receiver is just catching it on his face. The ball placement is impeccable. What does that turn into? Second and three. It's these little yards that show up, and it's just because of small things like ball placement, which is arm talent, which is accuracy, and he does those so well. So that's why he's in my top five, obviously. Now we get to J.J. McCarthy. He's number five on my list. J.J. does a lot of things well, and I don't think that he was able to showcase them all because of the philosophy and, and schematics that Michigan wanted to play with. Now, the dude is totally unselfish, and he's a winner. You cannot argue with that. He did not care who got the credit. He just wanted to win. And that's the type of quarterback that other players are going to respect. And so for me, at least, he's going to walk into the NFL and, and guys are going to know that about him. And if he has that mentality in the National Football League, they will respect it. And he will win because of it, because he's got elite ability. And that showcased itself not as often as the other quarterbacks, 
but it did add times. Watch right here. So this is a nice little creative set. They're going to use two tight ends and a running back on this side. And what does that do? It's going to distinguish whether Purdue is in man coverage. So when you've got linebackers on the backs and tight ends, you know it's man because you've got corners up here. So now he knows he's got singled up man coverage with a safety like way back here in Bermuda. I mean, this dude is way deep here. They love to run man coverage. So what does he have? He's got the slot fade to Roman Wilson. It's an empty set. They didn't do this a ton, but this is straight drop back pass. And what does he do? Bam, back shoulder. In a lot of ways, it's very similar to what Michael Penix did with Roma Dunze against Michigan State. And yet we don't rave about J.J. McCarthy's ability to pass the ball like we do with Michael Penix, but it's there. They just didn't do it all the time. If Penix was asked to throw the ball, drop back past 20, 25 times, straight drop back with no play action, McCarthy did it maybe like six or seven times a game, but it's there. If you're watching for it, it's there. And this is why he's gaining some speed. Uh, in the lead up to the draft. And then this is really where it shows up. When you get to third down, he's got an incredible ability to create. So the cutups when he moves the chains, him leaving the pocket, finding guys down the field, it's, it's really fantastic. That was a great one against Purdue. He would do it again here against Indiana as we move on. He can make the offense right even when the defense is making a play. So the defense does everything correct here. And in fact, the offensive line in the back, they kind of blow the protection. Indiana's going to create a little stunt on this offenses, uh, on the offense's left side, and they get a free rusher. Watch McCarthy just, boom, he's out of the pocket. Now we're creating. Okay, what are we doing? Well, we're going to point at our tight end. Why? Tight end's in man coverage. Point him deep. That puts the defender in a predicament. Now the defender is going to have to say, am I going to go with the tight end or am I going to come up and defend the run because McCarthy can run? There's the chains. It's third down. It's third and 10. McCarthy says he can run. So guess what? Defender's going to have to say, you know what? I'm going to come up and defend the run. And what does McCarthy do? He just dumps it over the top. That's creativity. So that's what you see when you turn on the tape and you watch him on third down. He's constantly moving the chains and putting the defense in a predicament in a bind with his athleticism, with his creativity. Then you've also got his, his unabashed confidence. And this kid is confident now. J.J. McCarthy is confident. That showed up against Ohio State. Watch this throw he makes against Ohio State to Roman Wilson for a touchdown. He gets man coverage with a robber. Malik Hartford, a true freshman safety, is a robber. He's sitting here and he's just reading J.J. McCarthy. So McCarthy immediately sees the coverage, and he knows that Roman Wilson is going to come across the field. So he wants to throw this one-on-one, -on -one, but doesn't like it. He doesn't like the coverage and the leverage. So he comes back with a robber and has told me, I saw the robber turn his head, and so I threw it right at him. And I'm like, this, this is wild. He throws it right at the robber, down the barrel, and this throw ends up being a touchdown, which blows my mind. Look at that window. There is no window there. No window there. And Roman Wilson is able to catch that ball, dive for the goal line, and it's a touchdown for Michigan. It was ruled a touchdown for Michigan, and it stood. I tell you, man, that takes some serious confidence, and he has that. And that's why he's my number five quarterback. I think he's going to succeed, and I'll be shocked if he's not drafted in the top ten. Now, Penix, is he going to get drafted in the top 10? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I doubt it. McCarthy's probably got more momentum than that. I think those can be kind of interchangeable. Um, in fact, in, in my top 50 list, I, I have JJ at five and, and, and Penix, or excuse me, at four and Penix at five. So to me, those have been kind of, they're different styles of player. And I think each of them can succeed. Now there's one guy that's not up here that I also think is going to be a first-round talent. That's Bo Nix from Oregon. I think there's going to be six guys drafted as quarterbacks in the first round of this draft, and Bo Nix is going to be the sixth. I think he fits perfectly with the Denver Broncos and Sean Payton. If they draft him, I think that's a fit that could produce wins, success early in his career. Let me show you why. If you look at what he does... You see a guy that's very cerebral in nature, so he knows what's going on. So this one, it might not, it's like, oh, it's just a one-on-one -on -one with Troy Franklin. By the way, Troy Franklin is the elite player. 
But what I want you to see is like the point guard nature of this, okay? So he gives a little bit of a fake and now he's reading out this one-on-one -on -one, and it's a double move. So he can see like, okay, this ball either is gonna go down the field or I can read it out and what do I, can, what do, I do? Throw it on the back shoulder. And he makes that decision quickly and he throws it on the back shoulder, Troy Franklin stops and boom, it's a huge play for Oregon. But constantly when you're evaluating Bo Nix, what you see is that this guy makes quick decisions and the ball comes out of his hand with accuracy and that point guard style of play fits a guy like Sean Payton, which is exactly what they utilized with Drew Brees. It would go on. And, and this guy continued to make these types of throws and plays and he would use his mind. Here he's got an empty set right here and watch him, he says, okay, I know this defense right here. He's got, he points out, now the wide receiver knows what's going on. Now the offensive lineman knows what's going on. He can change the protection. He knows what's happening on the field and he's gonna be able to exploit the area that the defense leaves open. So he pointed, he communicated to his team because of his cerebral nature. And now, regardless of what happens on the defense, watch how quickly the ball can come out because he knows what he's looking at. Boom, back foot, ball out, 1.8 seconds. This is exactly what Russell Wilson did not do for Sean Payton at Denver. This is why it was oil and water with the Broncos. This is why it would be such a great fit in Denver with Sean Payton because the guy wants to get the ball out of his hands very quickly. He knows where to go with it. It's accurate. He knows what he's seeing, and he can distribute the football. I, I really love Bo Nix, and, and this play, in a lot of ways, can epitomize that as well. It's always, for me, about the quarterback's ability to understand what he's seeing. How do I make a decision pre-snap, evaluate that decision post-snap, and make a play? So he's got three over two on this, what I would call the short side, which means what? I've got three over three on the top side, my strength side. So we've got a couple of blitzers here for Utah. So where does the football go? Well, he never goes to the three over three side. So what does he do? He throws the three over, or excuse me, three over two. So now he goes three over three. He knows the defender has flat feet at the 35 yard line. And this ball is ripped into the hole right there perfectly for Franklin. That's just an example of him understanding what he's looking at. That I, Bo Nix is a phenomenal player. All of these guys, I think, are going to be first-round talents. That's a bit of a synopsis of why I love all of these guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment below. I love to jump in the comments here on YouTube. And remember, this is a YouTube exclusive. So you're getting this nowhere else, all of this video is exclusive to, to YouTube. So make sure to share it with a friend, invite them in to be subscribers here to the Joel Klatt Show, uh, and then follow us on social media as well, at Joel Klatt Show. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment. I'll try to jump down there and comment with you.